Hello, victorious ones. How are you doing? I hope everyone is having an amazing, golden, victorious day in the Lord. So I'm coming on here to just encourage the body of Christ. Amen. And so go ahead and share this broadcast with somebody else. Amen. Go ahead and share. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm, Lord, I praise your holy name right now. Hallelujah. Mm, Lord, I praise your holy name right now. King of Kings, Lord of Lords. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, Lord, I praise your holy name right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory mm, to the King. Abba, you are sovereign. There is no one else like you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Father God, for what you have done. Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for what you have done. Oh, whoo. Lord, I praise your holy name. Father God, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. I cover everybody who's getting ready to watch this broadcast. Oh God, I thank you for your anointing. Hallelujah. I can feel the weight of your glory, Abba. Hallelujah. Oh God, I thank you that everybody who watch this, Father, by faith you are releasing swift restoration. Swiftly, God is moving swiftly on your behalf in the name of Jesus. He said, I'm coming speedily. Ha! I'm changing your situation. Speedily. Speedily. Ha! The son of righteousness is coming speedily quickly swiftly with healing in his wings to heal you and your family god is getting ready to heal you on a different level healing 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 in the name of jesus hallelujah open up your mouth and begin to praise the king of kings and lord of lords come on now i need all the hezekiahs to turn your face to the wall of salvation and begin to pray it's the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man that avail it much when the, when the prophet isaiah told hezekiah you're getting ready to die <laughs> the bible said hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he began to pray the persistent the persistent widow she prayed and prayed jesus said men and women ought to always pray pray without ceasing turn your face to the wall right now and god is getting ready to show up the prophet came with a negative report a negative he came with a negative report the prophet told King Hezekiah, and his name God mean, means God strengthens. He said, put your house in order. Put your house in order. You get ready to be taken away up out of here. And King Hezekiah could have said, he could have said, okay. He could have said, okay. He could have said, okay. But there is a remnant of the most high God. <laughs> When we receive the negative report, we can turn our faces to the wall and begin to travail, begin to pray like Elijah and watch God release fire from heaven to change your situation. I'm here to decree and declare, if you turn your face to the wall of salvation, God said, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to heal that thing. I'm going to heal it. I'm going to, oh, that emotion. I kept on seeing 15. And I thought 15, okay, my birthday is 215, okay, 15, 555, grace. I kept on seeing 555, five, five, five. Oh, 
I kept seeing 555 and I'm like, yes, my birthday, grace upon grace upon grace and it means grace, yes, 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 yes. But the prophet, because Hezekiah prayed, the prophet had to pivot. There is a pivoting taking place. Hallelujah! Where they said no, they got to say yes. Uh, God is turning it. God is turning it. Come on, prayer warriors. Come on. Turn your face to the wall. God is getting ready to turn your situation around. And he said it's going to be speedily. Because he spoke to me this morning. And he said, Mercury, Mercury, the planet, is the closest to the sun. And I'm not a scientist, but the Lord teaches me things. And give me the revelation. Now, we were talking about new beginning yesterday. And we're talking about the man who had been crippled for 38 years. Long, long time. Long, long. How many of you have been going through a long, long battle? It's been long and long and oh, and, and just one conversation with Jesus. And, 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 and Jesus said, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And instantly, speedily, swiftly, the man got up and began to walk. God is going to turn your situation just like that in the blink of an eye. And so he said, the planet Mercury, it's hot in Virginia, it is hot, but I got, I got to release the word of the Lord. I got to be obedient to God because of what God has been doing in my life. I got to be obedient. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh God, I thank you. Thank you so much for what you've done. Oh God, thank you so much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for what you did for me, oh God. Thank you. And the Bible, I'm telling you, the man got up and began to walk. <laughs> you getting ready to walk? Who oh, you getting ready to walk in favor? You're getting ready to walk upright. I'm talking about new walk. Put on your gospel shoes of peace. You're getting ready to walk on the high places again. And, and, and the Lord began to show me about Mercury. Mm. Speak, Lord. It is closest to the sun. And we know that we got to stay close to the son of righteousness. His name is Jesus. But what blew my mind and what confirmed the word of God is this. Mercury it only takes 88 days. Come on, prayer warriors. Put down double, double new beginning. Double new beginning. Double new beginning. It takes Mercury 88 days to go around the sun. The earth takes 365. God said, I'm hastening my word to perform my word concerning you. God is getting ready to speed things up and to, to make sure that I, that I know it was him because God always confirms everything. So I'm like, oh my goodness, 88 days. Oh my goodness, double new beginning. You know me, I'm like, oh my goodness. And it's going fast, honey. Woo! 38 years, the man was stuck. For 38 years, he was stuck. But when the sun showed up, <laughs> Jesus, and what did Jesus say? He spoke the word because he is the living word. And guess what? That same spirit of Jesus is on the inside of us. So we get to speak the word of God, death and life for the power of your tongue. Come on, speak those things that be not as though they were. And so just like that, the man was healed. God said, Mercury goes around the sun so fast. The, the, the earth is barely going around, right? Take it this time, go slow. God said, Mercury going fast. I'm getting ready to move swiftly on your behalf. And I'm just the apostle of God to deliver the message. And I'm out. It's hot outside. It's about 95 degrees. And I had to come out here and tell y'all because I got I to gotta be obedient. And so about an hour ago, I'm sitting in the car. We pulled up. I'm sitting in the car. And I turn. And the car next to me, the license plate says speedy. And I'm like, oh, God is moving fast. Oh, God is moving fast. 
And so I'm here to deliver the message for you. Those of you who've been stuck. That man was stuck for 38 years and just one word, his situation was changed. The prophet went to Hezekiah and told him he was going to die. The, 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 the king turned his face to the wall and began to pray. And before the prophet could leave the palace or wherever, leave the building, God said, pivot, pivot, pivot turn all the way back around. And go back to Hezekiah. Those of you who had it, you had a negative report. God said, I don't turn it. I'm in the car right now. I'm turning the wheel. Turn it. Go back to him. And then the prophet, the same prophet who said you is going to die, had to turn around and say you is getting 15 more years. Come on, 15 more years. They'll go to 15. That's where the connection was. God said, I'm restoring the years the palm of worms ate up in your life. That's for me. Let, let me. Let, I wish I could just dance. I'm so excited about this word. Oh, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. The man was told he was going to die. Less than no time. He was crying and he said, God, don't you remember how I serve you, Father? Don't you remember what I did for you? And he began to travail and he began to cry out. And where are the worshipers? God is like, come on, worshipers. Come on, come on, Elijah. The Bible said there was no rain for over three years. And the prophet Elijah on Mount Carmel, he said, we're getting ready to turn this thing around. We're getting ready to pivot. And he began to go in the birthing position. And you know, in the birthing position, you begin to travail. Oh God, don't you remember, oh God, what your word says? And he began to travail. And before you knew it, there was a small cloud in the sky and it began to rain. That's what God's going to do for the prayer warriors. Come on. Ain't no time to be cute. Don't be cute, cute with it. You got to get down in that birthing position and travail for your marriage and travail for your children and travail for your health. And God said, I'm coming swiftly, swiftly, swiftly. And, and, and to confirm the word even more about Mercury and how quickly it's going around the moon and, and Alicia is here. Alicia is a science teacher and a math teacher and all that stuff. She, I'm an English major. So she can correct me. I, I don't even know. I just read it in the article. Mercury is the closest. I think it's the smallest. <laughs> don't despise. Don't despise your little bit. I think Mercury is little. I, Alicia, please correct me if I'm wrong. And it's closest to the sun or something like that, right? But it goes around 88 days. <laughs> God can return the situation around swiftly. Now, Mercury, I've already done a study about Mercury. Mercury has diamonds on it, they said. God getting ready to give y'all diamond blessings, honey. Because you got the strength of a diamond. And Hezekiah means God strengthens. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you shall laugh in the days to come. You shall laugh in the days to come, honey. And God is giving you your diamonds. Mercury. When I wrote that poem about diamonds, I, I, I got an email from some article and it said mercury has diamond okay but what am i where am i going with this i'm going to first samuel 30 i'm glad you asked if you have your bible go to first samuel 30 now mercury is poisonous god is removing every poison out of your life right they, they said that mercury is in the fish i come against marine spirits my book talks about marine spirits those of you who are going through your kids are acting crazy your spouse acting crazy everybody acting crazy and there's a lot of stuff going on i just wrote a book it's called i am not me and it, it, it the lord gave me some revelation about witchcraft now i believe mercury they find it in the fish and mercury is poisonous god is removing all the poison all the curses all the contamination all that stuff god is flushing that stuff out but mercury there's a story about ziglag and it, it ziglag means like um liquid metal which reminded me of the mercury and i and i knew where the, where the lord wanted me to go with this okay the name ziglag okay let's keep on going first samuel chapter 30. i don't know who this message is for i'm just the messenger so my husband was eating something and on the box on the bottom of the box 
it said number the number hashtag that the number symbol and then the number three and i was like we were talking about the number three last night in the facebook live three speaks of the resurrection right jesus came back on day three hmm and, and i just left it like that well in this story right here in first samuel 30 it says now it happened when david and his men came to ziklag which means liquid metal which reminds me of the mercury because mercury i think the metal is like that too okay and it says on the third day the third day it says the amalekites had invaded their place and burnt it with fire for those of you your stuff has been burnt down i'm the messenger i'm here to, to deliver the message and i'm gonna go back in this house because it's hot the enemy burnt down their, their stuff burnt it with fire how many of you you had your stuff burnt down and it says that they had taken the women and and those who were there from small to great they didn't kill them they took them they stole them they robbed them carried off david and his men carried off their families stole from them who always stealing people's stuff john 10 10 tells you the enemy comes to kill steal and to destroy but jesus said i've come that you will have life and have life more abundantly right and so they done stole their their, their wives and stole the children whatever whatever they wanted they just moved right in like russia and then took over burnt it down and took away their family how many people your family don't got stolen enemy came in disrupted your marriage disrupted your children dis disrupt everything ha! but the thief has been caught and he must give you back seven times what he has stolen from you okay i'm just the messenger took somebody else's stuff and like what what you gonna do about it i got your stuff but let me tell you something as god's prayer warriors i want my stuff back and i'm going to the supreme courts of heaven i'm going to god's throne of grace and mercy and i'm getting vindication and i'm getting that joel 225 restoration and i'm getting jeremiah 29 and verse 11 for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you prosper you prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future god is restoring your stuff time seven but you got to get in that position you got to know that you know that you know that's my stuff and you're giving it back to me and i'm taking it by force i'm not asking no listen i'm going to god and god told me exodus 14 14 come on stand still and and see my deliverance god getting ready to deliver you and your family the enemy is trying to make a mockery of the saints but god's been showing me some stuff my husband and i will say something and it happened just like this we will say before we can even finish the sentence god answer just like that i'm like okay okay because you want me to have the faith and my husband to have the faith so when i teach the word of god you can't tell me nothing Cause I'll dream it, I'll see it, I'll smell it, I'll taste it, I'll feel it. To God want, want me to know, it's me, baby. Now go tell them, I'm turning things around for them. And he also wants you to know that because you don't feel it or see it, doesn't mean that it's not turning. You don't feel mercury and, and the earth and all that stuff moving, but everything moving, baby. The river moving, ocean moving, the wind is moving, your heart is moving, beating, do, 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 okay? Things are moving. The earth is moving. You don't feel it, but it's, it's turning. Things are turning around for you. It, it doesn't matter if you can feel it or not. God said it is moving. It's turning around. It's pivoting for you. Just like Isaiah had to pivot and turn back and go back to Hezekiah. God said, I'm turning things around for you and your whole household. Do you believe the report of the Lord? And so they done took the people, them stuff, their family, whatever, and burnt stuff down. Invading the people's them house. Invading their territory trespassing there will be no more trespassing you listen you can't come past the threshold no more ha the blood is on the doorpost the blood is on the doorpost you gotta pay me back all my from all my stuff time seven and so they carried everything away but the good thing is they didn't kill anybody <laughs> but even with that we don't care because we know that god will raise a valley of dry bones honey god all you gotta do is speak to the thing that look like it's dead 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 all you got to do is speak to it, speak to it, prophesy, prophesy, open up your mouth and begin to prophesy like Elijah on Mount Carmel. Death and life is right here, honey. Begin to speak the word of God. He said it's going to rain now. 
it, it was drought for a long time. It was a famine for a long time. No, no, no. He said, at my word, there's not going to be no rain. The same prophet went back on the Mount of Carmel and he began to pray for rain. And God said, okay. And then it began to pour down raining it's your mouth it's the word who is the word the word is jesus he is the living word in the beginning was the word and the word was with god listen jesus you got the spirit of jesus on the inside of you he said the same spirit that raised christ from the dead lives inside of you open up your mouth and prophesy and god said if you prophesy my word i'm gonna confirm my word and my angels are listening for the word it's all about the word Speak the word of God and God's angels are coming to confirm that word. There shall be a swift performance. God said, I'm hastening my word to perform my word concerning you. Whatever the situation is, I don't know your business. You know your business. God said, I'm coming. Put the word, put my word in your heart and speak it. Speak my word. I don't care what you see with your natural eyes, what you hear with your natural ears. God said, speak my word. That's all I'm looking for is I'm looking for a Mary who's going to worship me, who's going to speak my word. And when you begin to break the alabaster box, and get in that birthday position uh, Releasing my word uh, I'm showing up to perform my word uh, That's what I promise you And I'm a promise keeper I'm a covenant keeping God And if I said it in my word I'm going to do it for you But I'm not coming slowly I'm coming like Mercury Swiftly Swiftly And so it says that David and his men came back you went off to do the Lord's business. You came back and your stuff is still up. And they began to cry and weep. The Bible said that they lifted up their voices and wept. How many of you know that feeling where you lost your stuff? You lost your marriage. You lost your relationship with your kids. You lost your health. Whatever. You lost your money. And they began to weep loudly. And the Bible says until they had no more power to weep. Now that's some weeping right there. When you cry so much <sighs> that you have no more power left to cry. And then God is bottling up your tears. Putting all your tears in the bottle. Because he said, I'm a, I remember you. And I'm coming. I'm coming. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Your joy is coming right now. It's morning for you. The bright and morning star is Jesus. Isn't the sun a star? Come on, come on, come on. He said, weeping may endure for a night. But joy is coming in the morning for you. And what's joy? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Your strength, your strength. Listen, wipe your, wipe your tears from your eyes. They were weeping. And so it says, they were crying. And, and verse 6, now David was greatly distressed. Why? Because the people turned on him. The same people that he was leading and blessing. They began to blame David. Because they were all depressed and discouraged. And so they decided, you know what? We're going to turn on the leader. And they said, we're going to stone him. Because the Bible said their soul were grieved. Sound familiar? Some people are quick to stone the leader. God's leader. Ask me how I know. But leader, this is for the leaders. When they start planning to stone you after you done did all the right stuff. And it wasn't even your fault that all that stuff happened. And they, they, they're trying to stone you, talk about you on social media, stoning you with their words, evil words. Because everybody's in a bad situation. And so, you know what? We're going we're gonna to find a scapegoat. We're going to blame somebody. So they decided to blame David. Loyal David, who's been leading them. And so, David went to God. Read it for yourself. 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. While they were over there, oh, we're going to stone David. It's David's fault. I'm sick and tired of these leaders. And then, you know, they start running their mouths. The Bible said, but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. So while they're looking to stone David, they should be praying, right? But oh no, they're in their flesh. And they want to stone David. Who were the Davids at who are listening? You didn't do nothing. They're looking for a scapegoat and they say, oh, Marion, you, we're going to stone you. Oh, Bianca, we're going to stone you. 
I know, it was, I know you didn't do it, but we gotta blame somebody. We're in the flesh now. They know David is not the enemy. That's what Satan does, right? The real enemy over there with your stuff, and you over here fighting each other in the church. Uh -uh, a couple, your family over here fighting. Your family gotta come together during time of, of distress. Right? You got to be careful when you're going through difficulty because it's easy for you to fall apart in your flesh and your emotions and ah, it's my husband, it's my kids. It, no! You got to go to God and pray. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And what did he do? How did he do it? The Bible said he told the priests, bring me the ephod. And so they, he brought David the ephod because you know what? We're going to go to God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all that we need will be added unto us. So the Bible said in verse 8, new beginning. Mercury goes around him, I told you, 88 times. New beginning. So David inquired of the Lord saying, because you got to go to God. Don't, don't, don't lean to your own understanding. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge the Lord, and he will direct your path. David didn't go in his emotions acting crazy. He was sad, too. His, his wives and children got kidnapped, but he, you know, he, he was like, I know I can't do anything about it. You know, let me go to God, and you can't do it by yourself, victorious one. You need God. Go to God about it. Like Elijah, like Elijah, like Elijah. We got to learn from the prophets in the Bible, and so David went to God. He didn't try to attack anybody he didn't try to go off and talking crazy on social media he went to God and 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 he inquired of the Lord he began to talk to God about it those of you who are going through this is prayer and God said it's the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man that avail it much and God said pray he said call on me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things you don't know and so go ahead and write that down. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. God is waiting for you to come and to inquire of the Lord because he wants to show you great and mighty things that you don't know about. So you can enter your swift new beginning in the name of Jesus. And so David inquired of the Lord saying, shall I pursue this troop? Question number one. Ask God some questions. Get clarity. So he said, shall I pursue this troop? Question number one. Question number two. Shall I overtake them? And he answered him. God answered. Because God said, if you call on me, I'm going to answer you. He said, ask. Seek. Right? Not all those stuff. He said, if you ask, I'm going to answer you. If you seek me, you're going to find me. If you knock, the door is going to be open unto you. God is waiting, y'all. God is sitting there with all types of blessings right here, waiting for you to come boldly to the throne of grace and mercy to get what you need. You're over here looking at somebody, the stone, over here up in your flesh. No, you got to look to the hills from when stomach your help. David went to God, and God is like, I'm glad you came to me because I'm going to respond. And what did God say? God responded, pursue, Bianca. Pursue, don't you give up. I've given you the strength of an ox. I've given you the strength of the Lord. Come on. I've given you joy. I've given you diamond strength, Bianca. And he said, she, God said, pursue. For you shall surely overtake them. Come on. And not only are you going to overtake that thing that's been coming at your bloodline, that's been coming against your marriage, that's been coming against your spouse, that's been coming against your children, that's been coming against your health, that's been coming against your ministry, that's been coming against your businesses, that's been coming against your job. He said, not only are you going to overtake them, conquer them, ha, he said, you're going to recover it all. You're getting ready to recover it all victorious ones. And that's the word the Lord gave to me to tell y'all. He said, pursue for you shall surely overtake them and without fail. Because failing is not an option because my plan is to prosper you. And you always triumph in Christ. There's no failing in this season. If you do it the way that God is telling you to do it, get in that birthing position and begin to worship and praise the Lord like they did in 
in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, begin to praise the Lord, begin to celebrate the Lord, and the Lord is going to go, go ahead of you, and the Lord is going to destroy your enemies, and when you show up, all you're going to do is get the spoil, and it took three days for King Jehoshaphat and them to get the spoil, it is your day three, God said, I'm giving you a triple blessing, he said, go forth, go forth, go forth, because you shall recover it all, you're not going to fail this time, I'm restoring the years for you that the palm of worms ate up, listen, you're recovering, you have, you are recovering right now in your body, for those of you who are sick, I decree and declare that you are recovering right now, and it's going to be swiftly, God is doing it speedily for you in your body, whatever the infirmity is, I bind it, and cast it out into the abyss in the name of Jesus, and I, I decree and declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed, glory to God, glory to God, for those of you, your marriage is all scattered all over the place, I speak restoration to your marriage, you shall recover it all, in the name of Jesus, those who God has joined together, let nobody put asunder. And so I speak healing to your marriage right now in the name of Jesus. Your relationship with your children right now. God is causing it to be recovered. God is restoring your children. Ask me how I know. And God is moving swiftly, giving you a second chance. Come on, Hezekiah. Where the enemy pronounced death and destruction. I'm here as God's apostle to let you know that you will not die, but live to declare the works of the living God. I speak to the valley of dry bones. And I say, come alive. Stand up on your feet and walk. Get up. Pick up your mat. And walk in your recovery, for you shall recover it all. Thus saith the Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Test of, listen, I got testimonies to tell. Testimony of how God heals and delivers. God will heal you, heal your body. Hallelujah. God will restore your marriage. Restore your relationship with your children. God will meet every need. Oh my God. You are recovering it all what the devil meant for evil. God said, I'm turning it around. Turn the word again. Turning it around for your good. I'm working it out for your good. Just ask Joseph. And I know it's painful. That's why you can't rely on your own strength. You're going to be like David's men. Trying to stone people with bitterness. Because you're hurt. But you need to go in the presence of the Lord. When you go in the presence of the Lord. You can't stay dead. The situation can't stay dead. Get in the presence of the Lord and begin to travail like Elijah, like Mary break open the alabaster box. God said, come, come to the throne of grace and mercy and worship me. And when you begin to worship me, lifting up your voice as a trumpet, singing my praises, I'm going to pulverize your Jericho wall and you shall recover it all. In the name of Jesus. Come on. And God is doing it swiftly, swiftly, swiftly. He said speedily. New beginning for you. I'm doing a new thing for you. I'm doing it for you. You prayed like Hezekiah. He prayed. And when, when the prophet showed up, the verdict was changed. And God restored the years. Even the, the, the sundial went backwards. Ten steps. <laughs> God began to do some miracles for this man and God said I'm giving you miracle signs and wonders they even created a, a, a fig paste God began to give them strategies and gave them the ingredients gave, gave them the remedy God said I'm giving you the remedy they gave him the fig paste remedy and they put it on the boil 
God, God gave him some natural things to do. But there's some things that you do, it's not for you to do. It's only God. But God will let you know what you need to do, what thick pace you need to come up with. For whatever situation, that's where you must get in the presence of the Lord and begin to listen. Get in that quiet place. Listen, go back to Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And God says, I will elevate you. And with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. Get in my presence and begin to worship ship and you shall recover it all in the name of Jesus and that is the word of the Lord for the victorious ones today and I had to come and deliver it it's about almost 100 degrees outside <laughs> Bianca you in the same state isn't it hot it's hot but you know what it's God's word that's fire in our bones <laughs> It's us being close like Mercury and we're going, listen, things are turning around for us and we're getting our new beginning in the name of Jesus. I cover this message. I cover all of us with the blood of Jesus. Mm. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you in advance. The doctors told me one thing. In two days, God turned it around. Swiftly swiftly my husband and i'll be talking about something asking god for a request and before the request can even leave our lips god answering swiftly speedily there shall be a performance god's word it will come to pass in your life i don't know what your prayer request is i cover this broadcast with the blood father god let nobody who's wicked be able to track or trace this message father this ministry and all of your ministries that's out there, Lord. Cover us with the blood of Jesus. Cover every family, oh God, that's listening. Cover all of us with the blood of Jesus. Send your warrior angels, your ministering angels to help us, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Save the whole household, Lord God. Like you did for Cornelius. We're asking for the outpouring of your spirit. We're asking for revival. We're asking that tonight as we're sleeping, Father God, as soon as it turns midnight... We're asking for turnaround, Father God, like Paul and Silas. We're asking, oh God, for supernatural breakthrough. Father, we're asking for your thunder and your, your thunderbolt, your lightning, all of it, oh God, your heaven's weapons to be released into the camp of the enemy. We're asking, oh God, that the prisons, oh God, would be pulverized and the captives will be set free. Whatever the prison situation is, whatever the bondage is, we bind the strong and of bondage. And we cast them out into the abyss. We bind divorce, separation, fornication, adultery, deception, witchcraft, infirmities, poverty, debt, lack, mammon, marine spirits. We bind them and cast them out into the abyss. We set the captives free. Father God, tonight and midnight, the same way you did for the, for the Israelites. It was midnight where you began to destroy the firstborn, Father God, of, of, of Egypt. We're asking, Father God, that you would do miracles for us at midnight. Lord, I thank you for turnaround. Prodigal, the prodigal sons and daughters running back home to you at midnight. In the name of Jesus, you said to ask, oh God. We're praying, Father God, that those spouses who are in the wrong bed, like Samson, that you would deliver them tonight. That you would renew their minds open up their eyes give them a damascus road experience tonight the children who are out there doing what they're not supposed to be doing father if there's any addiction i bind the strong men of addiction and cast them out into the abyss i set the captives free heal us, father heal us completely restore us completely lord i thank you that we're in the recovery room father god we we have recovered and we recover it all time seven for your glory in the name of Jesus. Good news comes to us now. Father God, we shall testify in the days to come of what you have done, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for debt cancellation. Father, those who are struggling to pay their bills, we're asking, Father God, that you will bless them supernaturally. I pray, dear God, that you'll give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we need for the situations that we're in. But Father, we also ask him for miracles, that you will miraculously wipe away, oh God, the debts and give us a new beginning. 
I pray, Father God, that all the bills would be paid in full, oh God, there's nothing too hard for you. A cattle on a thousand hills belong to you, Father God. Father, I thank you that the same way you fed Elijah with heaven's food and, and heaven's drink. Father God, you're sending your angels right now to give us what we need. We don't have to beg for anything. The righteous are never forsaken or the seed beg for bread. Father God, we will never beg for bread. Because Lord, you supply all of our needs, oh God. Lord, I thank you. That you promise, oh God, that if we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, all that we need will be added unto us. And so we don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious for anything, Father God. You said by prayer and supplication, present our request unto you, Father God, and you will do it. Father, you will hasten your word to perform it. Pay off the mortgages. Pay, Father God, pay, pay off the rent for the rest of the year. Father God, cancel all the, all the household bills. I'm asking, oh God, that supernatural financial blessings will come the same way you're getting ready to heal our bodies right now supernaturally. Father, I thank you the same way you're restoring our family supernaturally. Father God, you're blessed in the supernaturally financially oh god in the name of jesus and we bear much fruit father god we are prospering because that is your will for us father you said for i know the plans i have for you declares the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future and so lord i thank you i speak prosperity over every family that's listening to this lord in the name of jesus lord i thank you that the anointing has been released upon this word and it's the anointing of god that destroyed the yoke of bondage oh god every yoke is destroyed and we're set free today oh God in the name of Jesus father I thank you that we are laughing in the days to come we're rejoicing you have turned our mourning into dancing we are dancing upon serpents and scorpions destroying them but we're celebrating you father God because you are you are great and mighty there is a celebration taking place where there was a funeral the funeral has been canceled Lazarus done left the tomb of God and we are celebrating with the new life that you're giving to our spouses and us our children and those we're praying for we're celebrating father we have life and life more abundantly out of our bellies are flowing rivers of living waters oh god living waters father i thank you for the ezekiel 47 river the river of the holy ghost the river of your word oh god is flowing inside of us oh god flowing through us and we flourish and we prosper and we thrive in the fruit of the spirit in the name of jesus love is overtaking the family love 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 joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness faithfulness self-control father patience wisdom knowledge understanding humility obedience father god i thank you lord for turning everything around oh god and and, and giving us beautiful crowns for our ashes in the name of jesus father thank you for restoring the years and removing the poison removing the mercury father god in the name of jesus lord i thank you I thank you that there's no more contamination, there's no more curses, there's no, there's no more wickedness, oh God. Where we where we clothe, oh God, we, we dip seven times in the water of your word like Naaman. Father, we dip seven times. There's complete victory taking place, complete deliverance. Lord, I thank you that you're washing the marriages, washing the children, washing, washing our souls, our minds, will and emotions, and we are refreshed, we are rejuvenated. The old things are washed off, washed off, oh God. Behold, I do a new thing in your wilderness. God is changing things quickly in your wilderness because you have turned your face to the wall like Hezekiah and God said I'm giving you living water in your wilderness and I'm causing the seed of my word to grow 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 and you shall see fruitfulness in the name of Jesus there will be no more lack there will be no more confusion in your home the only shalom peace is reigning because you answered the question Jesus said do you want to be whole do you want to get well in John 5 and your answer was yes I want to be made well I want to be made it whole and God said it is finished I'm the Alpha and the Omega and he who has begun a good work in you shall complete it expect recovery not just a little bit God said all times seven completely expect that your cup is overflowing with everything that you need expect Psalm 23 to be fulfilled in your life where there was no pasture. God said, no, 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 I'm giving you green pastures like never before. Your leaves will never wither. 
You are flourishing and thriving because you're holding on to me. You're touching the hem of the garment of Jesus and power just keeps on flowing through you because the same power that raised Christ from the dead is living inside of you and you're walking, you're walking now. You're not paralyzed or crippled anymore. Not with fear, not with sin, not with anything. You are upright, standing up, walking, walking in grace, walking in mercy, walking in revelation, walking in wisdom, walking. Your gifts are stirred up and God said your gifts are getting ready to make room for you. God is giving you room to bloom in the name of Jesus and you're no longer in the tomb where you've been stuck and you've been dead. God said, I've expanded you. I've enlarged your territory. Come on, Jabez. God has enlarged you. God has enlarged you. Oh, God, yes. God has enlarged you. Go ahead and read Isaiah 49. Listen, Isaiah 49 and Isaiah 54. God said, I've enlarged your territory. You ain't seen nothing yet. You have not seen, you, listen, you're getting ready to recover like nobody's business. I'm getting ready to spread you out. Mm. I'm enlarging you. Whew, it's going to be bigger than what you can ever ask or imagine. I'm enlarging your territory in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise your holy name. Whew, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Hmm. God is so good. I don't know who that was for. Who was that for? Who was that message for? Lord, I thank you. I think it was for me first and foremost. I received this word. I received this word. I received this word. You shall recover it all without fail. Without fail. You shall recover it all. Oh, and when you read that chapter, David sure, he sure enough did. He sure enough did. Because when God said it, that's what it's going to be. <laughs> you're going to recover and you're going to testify. The doctors told me something and in two days, less than two days, God turned it and said, not so. And, and, and it was one of, one of our children, he was concerned and he witnessed it, that God did it. All you got to do is ask him and he'll do it. But you got to believe. I said, I don't claim that when they, when they say, I said, oh, I do not claim that, boo boo. I claim Isaiah 53 verse five. And in two days, it was just like that. God was like, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> Recovered it all. Ask him, talk fast and pray. Fast and pray. And, and for those of you just now starting out with your fasting, you could fast three. Go go with number three. Fast three days. I mean three hours straight. Don't eat it. Don't eat anything. L don't don't listen to the people that tell you fast from TV. That's called consecration. <laughs> you fast from food. Don't listen to nobody. Listen. That's why you have, you have to have the wise counselors. Jesus never fasted from the food um from no tv but there was no tv back there but he didn't say "Ooh, i'm a fast from people uh -uh. that's consecration right you sanctify yourself and stuff like that but you want to get you want to be able to break through let me tell you what i do i pray about everything i fast and I sow. I do that. So when the doctors say, Oh, boo, 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 boo. I say, yeah, right. Isaiah 53 verse 5. And I was like, boo, boo, boo. I say, Apostle, here you go. I'm just my seed. And I've been doing this for years. And nobody can tell me nothing. My husband had a whole stroke, almost died in the sleep. My husband right there in the house right now, talking in his right mind. Can read and write today. Three things pray all day when i say pray all day i'm not exaggerating people gonna talk about you they're gonna say oh you so extra always god 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 but well, god is all i have <laughs> so pray all day in your mind mumbling your prayers and talk to god about everything we have a lot of journals so i, I, write, I write stuff in my journal you want to go ahead and you want to sow you want to sow into good ground though you sow into your leader so into the person that is ministering to you and i do the that's just three 
plus you gotta live right <laughs> you know you gotta make sure you follow all the other stuff but those are the three things that i do on repeat and god always shows up always there was a member in our household i ain't gonna say who got hurt and was in severe pain for like a month god healed that person and i was like okay we got a healing healing anointing on, on us i was like the person was nearly paralyzed like crippled not paralyzed like medically you know what i'm saying but couldn't walk couldn't walk and god healed that person so if you're listening to me talk to god fast about it pray and God will do it for you. He And expect him to do it. Don't be wavering. They tell you you got something. You're like, oh, I got, I ain't claiming nothing. Who got what? I don't care if it's written. Because you can write whatever you want to write. Because I have my written word. I have the written word of God. So you can write whatever you want to write. That stuff got bowed in the name of Jesus. And he is the living word. So they, they give you a report. Don't ever claim it. Don't be like, oh, I got this. Mm-mm. Don't claim it. You, 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 you'll use wisdom. You, you walk through the steps. You know, they say you need to drink more water. Drink your water. But you ain't, you know the water ain't, ain't your source. I'm going to drink that water. Yeah, but that's not my source. God is my source. God is my resource. So I'm going to use wisdom. Go ahead and take my blood pressure. Go ahead. Y'all go ahead. Prick my finger. Whatever. What y'all going to do? You do. You can use wisdom as, as being led by the spirit. But don't be claiming that stuff. Ooh, I got diabetes. Ooh, uh-uh. Don't you ever claim that stuff. No, I'll bind that in the name of Jesus. And you begin to walk that stuff out with the Lord. And God going to show you what to do, what not to do. So the doctor's saying one thing, but you're listening to the report of the Lord. Whose report are you going to listen to? God made those doctors. I don't know, your word is not above God. And you have to have that radical faith just like that in everything. When they tell you, oh my goodness, you know, how you going to pay your bills? You barely make anything at your job. God is my source and God is my resource. And, and, and God said, take my little bit. And I, when I take my little bit and give it to God, God will multiply it. I'm not living in the natural. I'm living in the supernatural. So I don't follow the natural order like, like everybody else. Who my job is going to pay for everything. No, 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 no. My God is going to do it for me. I'm going to be a good steward. I'm going to follow what God says, and God is going to meet my needs. So you got to pro reprogram your mind. Don't be, act, don't be down here with the chicken, you, the chickens. You need to be up with the eagles in your faith and stay there. And people are going to be, oh, you're crazy. You only make $1,000, and your bills are 5000 And they're trying to do the math. I'm not doing no math according to the world. I'm doing the math of heaven where it don't make sense. <laughs> like... I don't, I don't, I don't bow to the system of this world. You hear me, victorious ones? They say whatever they gotta say. I go to God, like Hezekiah, turn your face to the wall. God, what do you have to say about it? Cause they don't care about your God anyway in this world. They ain't, they ain't think about no God. I'm talking about the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham. They not think about that God. They, they, they think about that small G-O-D. But as for me and my house, we is going to serve the Lord. <laughs> we are going to serve the Lord. And we're going to follow what he says. So the widow that was picking up sticks during the famine and the drought, when Elijah said there was going to be no rain, there was no rain. God told the prophet, go east of the Jordan and, and drink the water from the brook, even though there's no rain, but miraculously there's going to be some water. And I have directed the ravens to feed you. Then when the, when the, when the water dried up, God said, okay, I'm talking to you now. I'm giving you some new instruction. That's why you got to listen, listen, listen. Don't be stuck. Well, God, you said east of the Jordan, right? And you stuck right there. No, God said, now I want you to go to Zarephath. Because I've, 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 I've commanded, right, the widow there who has sticks and a little bit of oil, a little bit of flour to feed you. And when she took her little bit and blessed the prophet, guess what happened? Her and her family ate. They ate good during the whole famine and the drought. They were eating. And because she was obedient, when her son died, 
the same prophet went up into that room that they gave him a room and prayed for that child and the child was resurrected. We don't follow the system of this world. We follow what God says. Be blessed, victorious ones. Don't forget to tag somebody and, 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 and share this. And I have a new book out. You have to order this book. It's called I Am Not Me. For those of you who are going through and, and you don't even know what you're going through, the Holy Spirit gave me that revelation and I wrote it in a novel so you can understand it, right? So I'm going to put the link for you to go and to download it and show your support. Amen. Be blessed, everyone, and I'll talk to you later.